Hi weavers, I'm here today to talk to you about a very hot topic, edges. Once again, yes, I've done two other videos on how to weave neat edges, but today I'm going to talk about a simple tip that might help you and also the reason why you may not be getting the edges that you want. Here's a piece that I've been working on. It's 8-2 cotton for warp and weft. And the edges, yeah, they're not too bad. But what I'm noticing is on one side, the edges are easier to obtain a neat straight line than on the other side. Now, why would this be? Let's have a look and find out. All right, on the left-hand side of the loom, when I'm bringing the shuttle in, I'm going into the up shed. Let's have a look at the edge thread. And this is the thread the warp thread that the weft thread is going to wrap around when I bring it through. So let's just take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so I do my pinching and my 45 degree angle to arrange it. And that looks like it's very snugly wrapped around that selvage thread there that is nice and taut. So if I beat that, that gives me a nice little edge there. Now onto the opposite side, which is the down shed for me. And this is the side that I'm having more trouble with getting a nice neat edge. So once again, I'll bring my weft in. Bring it around this, air, this warp thread at the edge. And what I'm noticing is that this warp thread at the edge is quite a bit looser than it was for the other side when I was in the up shed. Now, if I put this back into the up shed, you can see that the edge threads in the up shed, these are the ones that are threaded in the holes, not the slots, are nice and taut. So what naturally happens is in the down shed again, these are the slot threads that are on top now, and they're a little bit looser. That means I'm going to have less tension at the edge, and I'm going to have less control over whether this edge is nice and straight as I'm weaving it. Now, you can practice and, and get pretty good at still weaving a nice straight edge, even if the tension for this warp thread is not quite right but I do have a little technique that will help you out a lot. My husband absolutely loves fishing. He would fish all day every day if he could, but that is not what this lesson is about. This lesson is about weaving. So I've got some of his fishing line here. It's quarter pounder and it's nice and smooth. I don't think it really matters what sort of fishing line you have as long as it's smooth um, as long as it's not like braid which is not as smooth as this stuff so grab your fishing line you can just pop the reel on the back of the loom at the moment and you will need the start of the line you don't need to cut the line just yet what we want to do is the very last thread that goes through a slot on the edge we want to thread from the back the fishing line through that very same slot so that it's actually in that slot with that warp thread. Then we can bring it down over the front beam and on my loom I have this little handy bar that goes across here and I'm going to tie mine on this, onto that just with a regular knot. If you don't have a bar there just tie it you can tie it onto your roller or onto your apron rod depending on whether you've already wound that in or not. So now when I put some tension on that it should hold there because I've knotted it. Okay around the back and we've got that threaded through the heddle so that's all good. I'm just going to want this to hang down a fair bit. Now this, the length of this depends on the length of your warp. If you've got a long warp on, you probably want to have a long piece of line. Mine's not all that long, so I'm just going to cut it at a certain point. I've probably got a couple of meters worth there. And 
part of the way down, say about halfway down the back of the loom, I just make a little slip knot and then I can hang my S hook and tighten that up. So that's going to hang there for me and provide some tension. Alright, so I now have my fishing line weighted and it's sitting alongside the edge warp thread there. It's sticking out a little bit, that's fine. We're going to, once we start weaving, it's going to catch into the edge and that will be fine. Um, I apologise if it's a little bit difficult to see, but that's kind of the nature of fishing line, isn't it? Okay, so I'm in the up shed and I'm just going to weave a normal pick. And when I weave back again in the down shed, I'll need to go around that fishing line just to catch it in there. Now, if you're thinking at the moment, she's crazy, I'm not putting fishing line in my weaving. <laughs> I mean, in, in the edge of your shawl or your scarf or something like that. Uh, don't worry about that. We're going to take it out. It doesn't actually become part of the weaving and stay there. Alright, so now you can see that that last pick that I wove there, the weft pick, has secured the fishing line to the edge. And after a little bit of weaving, you will not even notice the fishing line's there. So have you caught on to the purpose of the fishing line? See, I don't need to worry about going around it now because it just naturally goes with this warp thread here at the edge. Yes, the purpose of the fishing line is to give the stability to this selvage thread here that was lacking before. And because fishing line's quite rigid, it provides a perfect straight line. It's really quite lovely. So here you can see where the fishing line was when we brought it in and now it's being totally secured and fastened in and it's running along this warp thread here and it's just come in there like a little lifeline and that's why I call it a neat edges lifeline. Can you see the difference now? Here we are before our fishing line came in with the floppy edges and here we are afterwards with the perfect straight edges. Now normally I would be leaving the fishing line in the work until I had finished the entire piece but um, I want to show you how easy it is to take out so I'm taking mine off on the loom and it doesn't matter whether you get to the end of your piece and then take the fishing line out on the loom although if you've wound a lot of cloth onto the beam um, get the cloth off the beam first and then take the line out. So all I have to do is come back to my little bar that I had here where the fishing line was already tied to it and then I can come around the back where I've got my line weighted and I can simply pull and voila, all done. Alright folks, I'm going to keep weaving on this piece. I've got lots of weaving to do today. I'm working on my next class, my next teachable class, which is going to be a garment making class. And I know a lot of you are waiting with bated breath for that one. So I'm 
doing my best to get that finished and get it uploaded for all of you who are waiting. And I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time. Until then, happy weaving. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe so that you can be updated when I have new videos available. Also, you may want to take a moment to visit my online weaving school. I have a lot of classes there now and they are available for single purchase or as a monthly or yearly subscription. If you haven't done so already, I also have an Etsy shop where I have quite a few patterns for rigid head or weaving. You may want to check those out as well.